Welcome to another episode of Elevated Minis. My name is Cody, and in this second and final part of how to batch paint your orcs and goblins, we're going to create a quick and easy muddy wet base for your miniatures. The zombie side Green Horde environment is meant to be a stormy countryside with very few buildings, wet fields, gardens, and groves. So that's the look I was going for here. So grab your favorite water effect and let's get started. So starting out where I left off from the previous video, which I'll link down in the description or in the card on the top right, uh, I'm using Nocturna Shadow, which is really nice dark olive green color to cover the entire base since it's going to be the darkest color of the puddles that I'm going to be adding a bit later. I also use it to uh, rim the base as well. But uh, if you guys are new here and you'd like to help me out, hit that like, subscribe, and bell notification, or leave a comment to let me know how I'm doing with these videos or what you'd like to see. It would be much appreciated. Moving on, I used European Thick Mud from Vallejo, which is going to be my go-to texture paint for the time being for multiple reasons. Um, I've used Sterling Mud in the past, which is a nice texture paint, but it's pretty one-dimensional that it only has one size of texture inside of it. And this stuff has varying sizes of texture, which is really nice when you go to dry brush over it later. Uh, you can thin this stuff down with water if you'd like, paint over it in any color if you don't like it, but I actually like the color for this particular base since it's supposed to be muddy. I intentionally left empty spaces in the mud because we're going to be creating puddles inside of the gaps in a later step. Uh, the biggest thing is don't make the puddles perfect circles or anything. You want, the, you want to vary the widths or create a couple small puddles to make them look a bit more natural. Uh, just push this stuff around with either a brush or a sculpting tool or toothpick if you want until you get some puddles you're happy with. After letting our thick mud dry for at least 30 minutes, we can go to our trusty wash. In this case, I'm using Agrax Earthshade and covered all the muddy areas to get in all the details of the thick mud. The biggest hang up with these bases is the drying times, but each base really is probably only about 5 to 10 minutes of work, which is what you want for hordes of miniatures. Once again, we're going to wait about 30 minutes to let the wash dry before going to a dry brush. Um, in this case, I'm going to use uh, Game Color Earth, which uh, is just to bring back some of that muddy tone. I don't have video of it, but a quick rundown if you're unfamiliar with dry brushing is you essentially take a dry brush that you don't particularly care about, use your paint straight out of the pot or dropper bottle, and wipe away nearly all the paint from the brush on a paper towel. Then you lightly brush over the raised areas you're working on and it picks out all the little details. It's a great technique to learn and I know there are plenty of videos out there on this subject. Then for a final light dry brush, I used Bone White, and I was pretty soft with this. I just use it in a few areas to have a little bit of a light and interest. Now that we're all finished with the dry brushing, we're going to start to work on the puddles. I started using forest skin and I painted along the edges of where the mud meets the puddles to kind of simulate a bit of a shallow side to them. I swirled it out a little bit so it didn't uh, look like a line and to make it look a little more natural. Don't worry if you think this looks a bit harsh right now, it will all blend together nicely once we get to the water effects. And following the same process I used for the shallow end, I used heavy gray for the mid-tone area and swirled into both the light and dark side of the puddle. The key here is to just not leave any stray lines. Now 
Moving on to the water effect, I used Mod Podge Dimensional Magic for this, but you could use whatever your favorite water effect is. One thing I like about the Mod Podge is that it is thick enough to where it won't run off the edges if you go slow enough with it. I know you can achieve the same thing with other products, but this is what I had on hand, so pick your favorite product here. Um, with the water, I wanted to have some parts that were clear and some that were kind of cloudier looking, so my idea was just kind of swirling a small dab of Ethonian camo shade to create a cloudiness, as well as to blend the colors beneath the water together. In the end, I was really happy with how this turned out. For this next part here, I'm using clump foliage that I picked up from Hobby Lobby and some glue. I like Aileen's tacky glue for this kind of thing, but use whatever scenic or PVA glue you're comfortable with. Um, and with a crappy brush you don't care about, dab a few spots of it around where you want the foliage to go. I had to kind of mash it down a bit with the tweezers to get it to stick, but I'll really lock it into place once I have these bits down. I realized that using a tuft would probably have been easier, but the effect I wanted was for it to be more of a shrub or a bush, which is why I went with the foliage instead. To really lock this stuff down, I watered down some of the tacky glue and really pressed and soaked it into the foliage so once it dries it'll be rock solid. You won't have to worry about this stuff coming off. Alternatively, you really could just use a swamp tuft if you don't want to go through all this, <laughs> but uh, I'm just showing you guys what I did. I didn't get video of it, but the last thing I did was I just used Nocturna Shadow again and uh, painted the rim of the base to clean it up. And that's it. A nice quick video for you guys. These bases were really simple to do, maybe 5-10 minutes per base without accounting for the drying times. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and if you got any suggestions on what you'd like to see, let me know. I realize I'm kind of slow at putting this stuff out, but I'm always working on something, and stuff will be out when it's out. You can always follow me on Facebook and Instagram where you're likely to see what I'm working on and things I've painted that aren't necessarily for a video. Uh, links for that are all in the description, so uh, don't forget to subscribe or leave a comment. Until next time, guys, thanks again.